All right, welcome to video 21. This is uh, just uh, instructions for the final uh, dialogue project and the exercises that go with it. Uh, for this version of the video, um, I'm mostly not going to uh, talk about things that are specific to uh, the abbreviated spring 21 semester that we're having. So I'll be acting as if you've read all four dialogues um, except for brief moments like this, which we can edit out, um, which I will edit out for future versions. So in any case, everything we've read so far this semester is has been a dialogue. Um, a dialogue is a genre of philosophical writing that purports to retell a conversation between multiple characters on philosophical topics. Um, and this is a genre of writing that emerges all the way, uh, has emerged independently all over the world, often beginning with, with conversations between teachers and students. Um, or, for instance, in, in ancient Egypt, there, were, uh, there, were, there was advice given from fathers to sons. And that sort of has evolved in different ways in different places into this genre that we call a, a philosophic dialogue. So for your final project, you need to write one, similar to the ones that we've been, been reading. Um, it should be uh, at least 1,000 words, but you can go up to 3,000 words. And this is, uh, this, is, this is more creative than the first writing assignment. This gives you a chance to do more different things. So if you want to expand to 3,000 words, I, I'm with you, but I, I'm probably not going to be excited to read much past that. Um, it needs to be on a topic related to this course. And there are going to be three exercises that you have to do that are a lead up to this. The exercises are just part of the exercise grade, right? So they're like all the other uh, writing assignments that you did where I just give you a prompt and if you made a good faith effort to answer the prompt, I give you 100 points. So those exercises are part of the exercise grade, but you, uh, you're using them to brainstorm your ideas for the final writing project. And then the final writing project is its own grade. Okay, so the first exercise that I want you to submit is, uh, I'm, I label it the teaching thesis and worldview exercise. So the idea is that a dialogue um, as, is an exchange of ideas. That's just what is going on in this kind of philosophical writing. So what are the ideas you want to talk about? What is your topic, right? What will the characters talk about? What worldviews or ideas will come together in your dialogue, right? You can also begin to think about whether um, your dialogue will have a, an explicit thesis or message that it's trying to get across. Or will it be like the uh, early Platonic dialogues that always ended in aporia, right? So we've seen a number of different ways that um, a dialogue can relate to a thesis, the, you know, a big claim. So um, uh, Plato's early dialogues all end in aporia. Uh, they end in not understanding. So the, they don't have a final claim that they're trying to show. Hume's dialogue actually did have a final worldview that it was trying to endorse, but it kind of hit it. You thought that the main character was Cleanthes and he was going to give the final message for the dialogue, but really Hume's worldview is represented by Philo. So these are different ways you can do things. Or, you know, a third perspective in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, um, you know, the, the main teacher figure is Krishna, God himself. And so obviously what Krishna says is, is meant to be taken as divine teaching. So for the first exercise, just give me a paragraph or two on what your topic is. And I've got a list of paper topics, potential topics at the end of this uh, video and at the end of the, the um, handout for this section, uh, for, for this assignment. 
Um, oh, yeah, another thing. Uh, will the characters be equally weighted? So one of the things we see with Hume is that each character gets uh, about the same amount of screen time, as it were. Whereas with, um, with Plato's dialogues, Socrates does most of the talking most of the time, right? So that's a different other decisions you can make. Um, will there be a clear teacher and a clear pupil? We already mentioned that um, dialogue as literature grows out of teacher-pupil dialogues, um, like what we see in Confucius, and then other dialogues like Plato subvert that by having the teacher, Socrates, claim not to be a teacher, right? Um, another thing to think about is whether your characters will have seen the arguments in the readings. Will they be familiar with the philosophers that we have read? Um, and, you know, so you could actually have your characters just be students in this class, in which case they would know everything that we've read. On the other hand, they might just be strangers on a bus, and they don't, and so, you know, um, they're just speaking from their personal, their personal experience. Um, and so, actually, that leads us to the next exercise, which is going to be about the characters. So, in a dialogue, ideas are represented by people. We said in the first exercise that in a dialogue, we discuss philosophical ideas. In the dialogue, the ideas are represented by people. So for this exercise, you need to think about who the characters are in your dialogue and how they relate to uh, the ideas that they represent, right? Um, so in, <clears throat> in Plato, Socrates not only represents um, an I is not just someone who's giving you ideas about what philosophy is, he represents in his life a way that philosophy should be done. And the same with Confucius. He doesn't just tell the students things. He represents in his life, like you think about the chapter on etiquette, um, he represents in his life how you should live. Um, <sighs> Uh, in Hume, Philo, as a kind of trickster character, re also represents his ideas. Um, so you want to think about that. You want to think about the setting of your dialogue, right? Um, maybe you want it to be like a classic courtroom setting or a deathbed setting or maybe just a classroom. How does the setting reflect the topic of the dialogue? Socrates has a dialogue on his deathbed about the afterlife, and there's an obvious connection there, right? That might be something you want to think about. Finally, it's, you need to have an argument. In a dialogue, characters give arguments, right? Um, your characters should have original philosophical arguments. They might be familiar with the arguments in the reading, but they have to go beyond them in some way. So for this exercise, you want to take at least one, act, one argument that one of your characters is going to give and put it in standard form, right? And to illustrate this again, I've got um, an argument over here from Hume on causation presented in standard form. You've got two premises and a conclusion, right? Um, the conclusion being that causation is just a, a kind of habit of the mind. It's not a real feature of the world. Your argument might be um, more elaborate. So this is over here. This is Hume's argument from design or the argument from design presented in Hume. Um, and it's got a sub conclusion, an, an intermediate conclusion. Um, in addition to writing your argument in standard form, you should write a paragraph or two describing the quality of your arguments. For instance, um, you can intentionally have characters in your dialogue give bad arguments. This is something that Plato does all the time. In fact, the full version of Phaedo has a sequence of arguments of increasing quality for the claim that the human soul is immortal, right? Um, and you going to want to use some of the technical vocabulary we have introduced in uh, this course to describe the arguments your characters give. For instance, are they a priori or empirical? 
Okay, for this last bit, I'm going to run through some of the suggested dialogue topics. And here I'm going to be more specific to the abbreviated semester in, uh, in spring 21 because we didn't actually cover everything behind all these topics. So in fact, the very first dialogue topic I suggest is what is real? Um, and I did throw in the initial exercise for this um, topic where I just ask you to speculate on what you think of when you think of the realest thing there is. This ties into uh, a, an extended discussion of metaphysics that happens in both the Bhagavad Gita and Plato. Um, so the Bhagavad Gita asserts that ultimately all things are God, right? God is the realist thing. And that may have even been an answer that you gave when I asked you what, what is the realist thing. Um, and so you might want to have a dialogue on that. Um, Plato also has an answer for um, what is the realist thing, because he says that the realist thing are the for the real things are the forms. Other times people will give a more fragmented view of reality. So there'll be a real for me and a real for you, but no, nothing bridging the gaps, right? And we actually touched on this a little when we talked about the relativism of the sophists. So that's something you could, your characters could ask. You could talk about nobility. So this, this goes back to the original idea uh, in Confucius. Right? Confucius presents a particular picture of what it means to be uh, a, an admirable person, a gentleman in his terms. Um, and so uh, you can ask, you know, what, is, what, it, what, it, what, it, what does it mean to be a noble person, a good person? Um, a lot of the dialogues that we've read are about education. Uh, Plato and Confucius both present distinct ideas about how education should work because they are concerned for the education of the ruler, lest we fall under the rule of someone who is corrupt, right? So you can talk about this. This would also be a chance to talk about your own education, maybe. Um, for all these topics, I've got sub-questions. I'm not reading all of them, but you can also use the sub-questions off this main question to think about things that your characters might ask or ways that they, um, uh, you know, just, just, just look at these for inspiration. Um, the, so the last two topics are, are the intensely theist topics. Uh, what is God and is there a God, right? So... One of the things that happens with Hume um, is that it's people, not, not only do they start arguing about whether God exists, but it turns out that people have such differing ideas about what God is that it becomes hard to even know what the question is. So again, um, if you want to have your characters talk about the existence of God, I think that would be a great dialogue. And one of the things that you can do with that is um, ask yourself, uh, what, uh, what, is, what is a God? What is this thing that I think exists? Um, and so, you know, maybe a character will say, oh, well, I, okay, God, ex that sort of thing exists, but this sort of thing doesn't exist. I don't know. Um, again, this, is, this, this dialogue exercise is primarily meant for you to be, uh, for you to explore your own ideas and to, have cre and to be creative to have fun. So if you want to explore the literary side of things, that's great. I encourage you to do it. Um, but, you know, I do need about, a, I, I do need a, at least a thousand words. And I, at some point in your dialogue, a character needs to give a philosophical argument. And that's, the, the, that is the framework for the assignment.